Hi, welcome back to Burning River Bushcraft. Today we're going to use some scrap wood and a little bit of fencing and make a turtle trap. Scrap half inch plywood around the house. This was a 24 inch wide piece. I cut four 13 inch long pieces. So the box itself is going to be 13 inches high. Two of those sides I cut two inches off of. So the box total is going to be 13 inches high by 24 inches by 22 inches. Now the metal fencing that I bought is a 24 inch wide piece. So cutting off the two inches, now I have a one inch lip on each side that's going to curl up. So I've already taken all the cuts. I've uh, screwed and glued this by the metal fencing. I did have chicken wire around the house, but I wanted something a little stronger than this. So this is a one inch mesh. You know, depending on what size turtles you're after, you could obviously go with a bigger size. But this is going to add versatility. I can use this roll and make several different projects with it. Because it's one inch squares, it's going to be real easy for me to lay it out. So I'm going to have one box. I'm going to have one box hanging over on this edge, and one box over here. Now I'm going to use my snips and cut this down. So I've got my metal wiring all cut out. Now I'm going to secure that to the bottom of the box using U staples. All right, so the bottom's all nailed into place. The next step is going to be to take it down to the water and find out exactly where the water line is going to lay with this. You know, if I have flotation issues, I can always attach, uh, you know, jugs or PVC or anything like that. But I'm going to establish uh, how far this thing is going to sit in the water. So the trap's not quite as buoyant as I hoped for. Probably if I was using dimensional lumber instead of plywood, that would have gave me the, the loft that I was actually looking for. Right now, I am about three inches from the top. I would, I'd be hoping for maybe four to five inches. So my options right now are to maybe screw a jug or something into the side of it, and try to lift it up a little bit. So before I work on the buoyancy issue, I'm gonna put a ramp on here. So the theory is the turtle is going to be able to climb up onto this box that's gonna be floating the sun itself. Uh, now any of the soft shell turtles, anything besides a snapper, they usually come up and bask in the sun. If this is going to get a snapping turtle, which is my hopes, you're going to have to actually bait this trap. So I'm going to go ahead and bait it and I'll get double duty out of this. But basically I'm going to have a, a, float, a ramp going down into the water for the turtle to climb up and then there's, the door is going to swing away once it gets on top. So what I did is I just kind of guessed at the angle. This is like a 22 and a half degree ramp. I'm going to place this here and that's going to uh, support the board more, give me my angle. Then underneath that, I'm going to attach a plastic jug to help it float a little better. stabilized now I can work with on the flotation so I've got a couple plastic jugs here and what I'm going to do is place one of them up under here I'm going to screw it in from the ramp side and from the inside the second jug I'm going to attach to the opposite side but I'm going to wait till I get it in the water that way I can establish how high I need to place it so that the trap sits level So hopefully that'll solve our flotation problems. If it doesn't, I'll just add a second jug on each side. So that'll be four total. So now I'm gonna work on the swing down door. So what's gonna happen is turtle climbs up here. This is gonna swing away when the turtle uh, transfers its weight onto the platform. So I have to cut this down so that it's smaller than the ID of the box. So I decided to use a piece of conduit that I had laying around for the pivot point on the door that's going to swing down and trap the turtles. So I established the uh, diameter of that as a three-quarter inch piece of conduit, 
placed it where I wanted it. Now I'm going to use a jigsaw to give myself a trough so that the door doesn't pivot forward or back. All right, so the balance point of this trap is finally figured out. This took quite a bit of work. I came in three inches on each side. I had too close a tolerance, so I kept hanging up on the boards. I've got a piece of PVC for a pivot, and I used cotter pins to keep this thing from shifting to the left or right. And, you know, turtle's going to come up the ramp. The bait's going to be right here. It goes down, and trap gets reset. And this is, you know, counterweighted for multiple size turtles. And I put a limiting strap to keep this thing from spinning all the way around. So this is a piece of 2x4 that I had cut to width. And then I drilled holes and drove like maybe 4 inch bolts in each side. Uh, if that didn't work, I would have just added washers to these bolts until I had the proper counterweight where it was going to reset itself. So now the next step is going to be to take it back to the water. You know, remember I added a plastic jug under here. There's a plastic jug on this side. I've got a second one that I'm going to screw on the opposite side to level it up. So let's get this thing down to the water and see how it works. All right, so like we expected, uh, I'm heavy in the back, or the, the, the ramp side in the front needs to come up. So I'm going to, looks like I've got about, about four inches of water line. I'm gonna run the front half up and then screw it in real quick. So my next step is going to be to drive in nails, I got to be at least two inches above the water line, and water line is about three inches below the top of the box. So I'm going to go down about one inch and drive a row of nails in to keep the turtles from climbing out of the box. So turtle trapping day has finally arrived. So I've got my trap all finished. The trap is baited with a piece of goose breast. I've got a piece tied on here. I've got another piece hanging on the back side of these nails and then I've got some hors d'oeuvres coming up the buffet line. I'm setting this on the side of the pond where the wind traditionally comes from my back. That's gonna give me a longer chance of it being blown across the middle of the pond as opposed to it getting grounded right away. If need be, I will you know, anchor this thing out with rope uh, halfway middle of the pond, whatever. But for right now, first day, we're just gonna throw it out there, let it float where it floats, and we'll see how this thing works out. So let's be clear on this right from the get-go. I have never seen a snapping turtle in this pond. I have seen painted turtles. I have seen box turtles. I've actually caught them before, but snappers, no. Uh, actually, I got feedback on my trot line video. There was a couple, one of the catfish was actually nearly eaten, and I had a bass on there too that was eaten. And the first thing the guy said when he looked at it was, yeah, and you've got snapping turtles, they're eating your fish. So. We'll see. That's all I got to say about it. I haven't really seen any indication of them. I'm out here enough where I think I would have seen them. So we'll give this trap 24 hours. We'll check it tomorrow. And then I'll give it a little while before I give up on this. Like I said, I think the trap is a sound concept. However, I'm not convinced that this is the proper place for it. Only time will tell. So this trap sat baited in the pond for a solid week. I freshened up the bait after a couple days no hits, nothing at all. Uh, the, the appetizer bait that I set on the, the trap door was untouched. I would still drag it into the side to make sure I didn't have a small turtle stuck inside it daily, but I had nothing. So we pulled the trap, I let it dry out a little bit, and I took it to a second pond. The second pond I took it to is absolutely loaded with turtles and frogs, no fish whatsoever. 
again, I let it sit for a week, baited, checked it every day, had nothing. So no luck with the turtle trap so far. As far as the uh, durability of the trap, you know, being plywood soaked in water like that, you see it's, it's warped big time. Uh, my joints are all starting to expand. The nails are all starting to rust in here. When you pull this trap out of the water, especially the second pond that I had it set at, it was covered with a thick layer of algae. All that encapsulated the, the wire mesh that's in the bottom of the trap. This trap I could barely lift out of the water. So when this thing is set, it's a two-man operation to get it up and out of the water. There's nothing portable about this setup. My original thoughts about it was if you had a, you know, a cabin or something in the woods, you could have this built and set on location. When you need it, you can pull it out, take it over to the water, check it a couple times, and end up with a turtle. That was not the case with this. Now, again, it could be uh, my inexperienced trapping turtles, or it could be poor location. But for right now, my experience with this turtle trap was a total fail. The build wasn't that bad. Uh, balancing the door was the hardest part. Most of it was all made with scrap, but to have zero success, two weeks, uh, I have caught turtles in this pond before, never snappers, but I do see signs of snapping turtles. And the second pond that I set it at, it's a known location for snappers. Nothing, no turtles whatsoever. So I would say this is a fail. In my case, this is a waste of time. There's uh, other things I could build with this material and other things I could do with the time involved in this that would make it more worth my while. Having said all that, I have seen successful catches with a trap similar to this. Now, if there's something I was doing wrong or something in the past that uh, maybe you have done that worked for you, you know, put it in the comment section and let me know. I haven't completely given up on this idea but this trap in this configuration at this location is a no-go for me right now. This is Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft. See you next time.